I'm really grateful to be with you here this morning and to share my face with you. And to the core of that faith belongs my conviction that you and that I and that we are the beloved daughters and sons of God. I might as well say that from the very beginning. You, we are the beloved sons and daughters of God. And one of the enormous spiritual tasks we have is to claim that and to live a life based on that knowledge. And that's not very easy. In fact, most of us fail constantly to claim the truths of who we are. I took this, uh, this flip chart here to give you a little idea about how we often live our lives. If I draw a little line here, And I say, that's my life. My little chronology. You could also say, my little clock time. Well, I was born in 1932. And I wonder what I should put here. Maybe, uh, well, 2010. It's not so bad. But that's really all I have. And now you may say, well, listen, I came a little later, don't uh, So you came here. And you may say, oh, I have a few more years here. But it doesn't make very, very much difference. It's still a small little life that you have. A tiny little life that goes by very, very fast. Like that. And the question for you and for me is, who are we? Because that's the question that keeps us going. Because all during our lives, we try to answer that question, who am I? And the first answer we live with is, I am what I do. And that's very real, you know, when I do good things and when I have a little success in life, I feel good about myself. But when I fail, then I start getting a little low or depressed. And when I'm getting older, I might say I cannot do much, but look at the trophies. Look, I did a lot of good things in my life, or look at my books, or look at my music I wrote, or look at my children, I educated, or look, 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 I did something good. Or we might say, I am what other people say about me. What others say. You know, that's very, very powerful, what people say about you. In fact, that sometimes is most important. If people speak well about you, you can walk around quite freely. But when somebody starts talking behind your back, or when somebody starts saying negative things about you, you suddenly might feel very, very sad. You know, and I remember speaking to thousands of people, and people say, that was wonderful what you said. But there was one man who said, up. Hey, he says, I thought it was a lot of nonsense. And that's the only man I remember. It seems as if when somebody talks against me or against you, that can cut deep into your heart. And when somebody in the morning said something about you that's really hurtful, somebody called you stupid or so, 
that can stay with you the whole, whole day and ruin your mood. And you might also say, I am what I have. I am what I have. I, I'm a Dutch person. I have kind parents. I have a good education. I have a good health. I have a lot of things. But as soon as I'm losing any of it, if a family member dies or if my health goes, or if, if I lose the property I might have, then I can slip into inner darkness. And what I want you to hear for a moment, that quite often a lot of your and my energy goes into, I am what I do, I am what people say about me, I am what I have. And you know, when that's the case, our life quickly becomes like this. Because when people speak well about me, and when I have a lot of things, and when I do good things, I'm quite up. I'm excited. But when I start losing, when suddenly I find out that I cannot do anything anymore, when suddenly I find out that people talk against me, when finally I discover that I lose my friends, I might slip into depression and be very low. And before you realize it, you and I are on a zigzag. Because when, it, when we are up, when, when these things are all right, but we are down when we start losing out. And most of our work, mental work then, is to just stay above the line. And we call that surviving. We want to survive, survive. We want to hold on to our good name, hold on to some good product, hold on to our, to our property. But we know somewhere that on the end there is a word that says you're going to die after all. And you know, when you live this kind of life, with all these ups and downs, the end is death. And when you are dead, you're dead. Nobody talks to, about you anymore. You don't have anything anymore. You can't do anything anymore. You lose it all. And that little, little life of you and of mine ends up into nothing. And what I want to say to you today is that this whole thing is wrong. That that is not who you are and that is not who I am. That's what the demon said to Jesus when he went to the desert. He says, turn these stones into bread and show you can do something. Jump from the temple and let people catch you so they speak well about you. Kneel in front of me and then I will give you a lot of possessions. Then you are loved because you do something, people speak well about you and you have something and everybody is going to love you. And Jesus says, that's a lie. That's the greatest lie that makes you and me enter into relationships of violence and destruction. Because I know who I am. I know who I am. Because before the Spirit sent me to be tempted, the Spirit came upon me and says, you are the beloved child. You are my beloved son. 
on you my favor rests. That's who you are. That's who I am. And Jesus heard that voice. You are my beloved. On you my favor rests. And it was that voice that he clung to as he lived his life. And people praised him, and people rejected him, and people said Hosanna, and people crucified him. But Jesus held on to the truth. Whatever happens, I am the beloved of God. And that is who I am. And that allows me to live in a world that keeps rejecting me, or praising me, or laughing at me, or spitting on me. I am the beloved. Not because people say I'm great, but because I am the beloved even before I was born. And dear friends, if there's anything, anything, I, I want you to hear this morning is that what is said of Jesus is said of you. You have to hear that you are the beloved daughter and son of God. And to hear it, not here, but right here, to hear it so that your whole life can be turned around. And listen to the scriptures. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have written your name in the palm of my hand from all eternity. I have molded you in the depths of the earth and knitted you together in your mother's womb. I love you. I embrace you. You are mine and I'm yours. And you belong to me. You have to hear that. Because if you can hear that voice, that speaks to you from all eternity to all eternity. Your life will become more and more the life of the beloved, because that's who you are. And then you start discovering that all that you do here is nurtured from the knowledge that you are the beloved, that that's who you are. And when you start believing in this, that circle of knowledge will grow, become bigger and bigger and bigger until it cuts right into your daily life. You will still have rejections, and you will still have praise, and you will still have losses, but you live him no longer as a person searching for his or her identity, but you will live it as the beloved. You will love your pain, and you will live your anguish, and you will live your successes, and you will live your failures as the one who knows who you are. And I want to give you a little word here. The voice that calls you the beloved is the voice of the first love. First love. John writes, love one another because God has loved you first. And the great struggle, and it's not easy, I'm not talking about something easy, is to claim that first love. You were loved before your father and your mother and your brother and your sister and your teachers loved you. If you heard the story that Julian was talking about, it was a story of rejection. The people who love us not always love us well. 
the people who care for us also wound us. And you might know from your own experience that those who often are closest to you, like your father, your mother, your children, your brother, your teachers, your churches, are also the one who might hurt you most. And how to live that? How to live, to live the truth that in this world, love and wounds are never separated. We can only live it when we always reclaim that first love. So that we can forgive those who love us poorly, but also so that we can recognize in the love that we do receive a hint or a glimpse of that first love that is real. Could you hold on to that? I mean, every time you have a temptation to become bitter, to become jealous, to lash out, to feel rejected, can you go back and say, no, I am the beloved daughter of God. And even though I am rejected, that rejection should become for me a way to reclaim the truth. It should be like a pruning that helps me to claim more fully and deeply the truth of my belovedness. And if I can hold on to that and live in the world, then I can be free to love other people without expecting them to give me all that my heart desires. Because God has created you and me with a heart that only God's love can satisfy. And every other love will be partial, will be real but limited, will be painful. And if we are willing to let the pain not make us bitter, but prune us to give us a deeper sense of our belovedness, then we can be free as Jesus and walk on this world and proclaim God's first love wherever we go.